Cool Gray. It is Friday, and Friday, according to Mr. Cool Gray, is pasta night. He likes pasta on Fridays, so I try to keep that from getting boring. And one of the ways that I've done that is with today's recipe. It is my own original recipe. It's kind of using elements from other things that I've done in the past, but I brought it all together in an original way, and it uses some ingredients that you might not expect to find in your pasta, but we are gonna make it delicious. We are gonna make a rotini pasta today, and we are going to put it in a beautiful, wonderful tarragon cream sauce. Maybe you'll uh, get inspired to try cooking with that wonderful fresh herb yourself. It's a very unique and wonderful flavor. We're gonna put uh, a topping of some roasted butternut squash and Brussels sprouts. I know you think you don't like Brussels sprouts, but you do. And you're gonna find out how to do it in a way that you're going to be asking for the Brussels sprouts the next time they're available to you in a restaurant or even in the grocery store. So please come along with me. We're gonna take a look at our ingredients and get this meal started so that when Mr. Cool Gray gets home, we are ready to manja. So for our ingredients, our recipe is going to have three components. There is the pasta, there is the tarragon cream sauce, and then there is the roasted vegetables that are gonna go on top of our meal. For the pasta, if you've seen any of my pasta recipes in the past, you know that this is my pasta brand of choice. Dreamfields is magic because it actually removes about three quarters of the carb content. The rest of it uh, gets absorbed by your body, only about five carbs per serving, and that's magic. Mr. Cool Gray needs to count his carbs, so it's the only brand we use. For our cream sauce, uh, we're gonna use some half and half, although you can use some cream and some whole milk if you don't have half and half on hand, and you do happen to have cream and whole milk on hand. Uh, we are gonna need some butter and some flour in order to make a roux. And whenever I'm making a roux or a sauce, I like to use Wondra. You can use regular all-purpose flour. It'll work just fine. I find that I get a smoother consistency with my sauces, if I do. And then I've got about a cup of fresh grated Parmesan cheese. I'm using Parmigiano Reggiano, wonderful sharp aged cheese that I just grated. Please do not use the powdery stuff that comes already in a pan or a cardboard container. Just don't. Just get yourself some fresh parmigiana and a grater and do it that way. And also going into that sauce is going to be our fresh tarragon. This is what fresh tarragon looks like. It's absolutely beautiful. We only need about two tablespoons of it in our sauce, but once I pull all of the leaves off of this and chop it up, it'll be about two tablespoons. So that's why I showed you the whole bunch so you can get a sense of how much you're gonna need to buy. And then for our roasted vegetable component, we've got our butternut squash. You can buy a butternut squash and chop it up, but I bought it today already cubed in a plastic container. It made it much, much easier, and I've gone ahead and cut it to size. I need bite size, half inch pieces. And then some Brussels sprouts. If you can find these on the stalk, uh, which I did find at Trader Joe's once, and it actually made a difference, they were unbelievably tender and delicious, but I bought mine in the bag, which means they're probably just a little bit older. And keep an eye for the smaller Brussels sprouts. The smaller they are, the more tender they will be. So keep an eye for those. The larger ones, you can just cut them into slightly smaller pieces. I've cut the feet off of them and I've cut them in half. And in some cases I've cut them in thirds or even quarters, depending on the size of the Brussels sprout. And you'll notice uh, I left a couple of the outer here we go, the outer leaves, uh, just a few of them, not all of them. When you cut those feet off, you'll find those outer leaves will fall off. You can discard most of them, but I leave a handful of them in there because they will crisp up and add a very nice uh, crispy component, a charred crispy component to this, which improves the overall meal. So go ahead and leave that in. And then also for flavor, I'm going to use these uh, green onions or scallions. I'm going to just chop those into big chunks, one inch pieces, and they're also going to get roasted along with my vegetables for a little extra flavor. That's it. Salt and pepper. That's all we're going to need. Pretty easy. I've cut up my green onions and I've added them to my vegetable mixture. I'm just going to pour everything onto a baking sheet. I've lined mine with aluminum foil just for easy cleanup. You don't need to. It's optional. I like to. The less scrubbing I have to do, the better. So you'll see some of these loose leaves, perfectly fine. I'm just gonna drizzle with a little bit of 
extra virgin olive oil, not a whole lot, just enough to coat, maybe two tablespoons. I'm gonna go ahead and add some kosher salt. Olive oil, salt, and pepper are magic. It's all you need for roasting vegetables. Oh, I forgot to mention the one other thing you need for roasting vegetables. It's the most important thing. It's your fingers. I always get my hands in the food. I think it makes it taste better. Of course my hands are clean. Of course they are silly. Just gonna give these a nice coating. If you wanna do this with a spoon, have at it. But I've gotta tell you, you are missing so much fun. All right, I wanna spread these out as much as possible. And then what I like to do is turn the cut side of these Brussels sprouts down. It will help them to brown by touching the surface. I'm only gonna turn these once about halfway through, so I wanna give them every opportunity to cook. I've got my oven preheated for 375 degrees. There we go. And I'm gonna pop them into that oven and let them roast. Probably gonna take about 10 minutes, and then we'll turn them and another 10 for a total of 20 minutes. So this is uh, 10 minutes later. I'm just gonna give these a quick stir. Watch the little fold. I'm hand holding here, folks, and doing it with one hand, just because it's easier. I'm setting it back up on my little tripod. But I wanted you to see, we're starting to get just a little bit of brown. We want a couple of things like these loose leaves to have a tiny bit of a char. That is a good thing. It's actually gonna add sweetness. I'm just gonna spread these out again, put them back in for another 10 minutes. And meanwhile, I'm gonna get my pasta water going and begin my cream sauce. So this is a slightly unusual way to make a roux. Usually you would melt the butter and then add the flour. Um, but this is the way I was taught to make it when I first made a tarragon cream sauce, and that is that you put the flour and butter in together and just begin to mix as the flour melts. I'm not 100% sure, let me bring you a little closer, exactly what the difference is, so I'm not gonna claim to be an expert in an area where I'm not, but it has worked for me and given me a delicious sauce every time, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it the way I've done it in the past. It's gonna take a couple of minutes. If you don't make roux whenever you're making a white sauce or a cheese sauce, uh, you probably are getting a nice, thick, creamy sauce. This helps get anything saucy started. Let me get this stuck butter off of here. Got this on a medium high heat. My butter's starting to melt in together. And that's gonna happen pretty quickly. Once I've got it looking incorporated and I start to see this expanding a little bit, when you mix the flour and water together, you'll see under heat it'll start to puff up a little bit. I'm gonna let it go a little bit more. And watch it expand a tiny bit here. It's probably a little difficult for you to see. I want you to see it, so let me try to get you a little bit closer still. My dogs are trying to get in, so I might have to stop the video for a minute and take care of that business first. So it'll bubble and foam a little bit. That's exactly what you want when making a roux. And the longer you let this go, it goes into different phases. It goes into a blonde phase, and then it goes into a darker phase. Uh, we don't want this to get too dark, but when it starts to bubble like this, what I'm gonna do now 
is just add a little bit of my half and half. I'm gonna add a total of two cups. My dogs are gonna have to wait a minute because this is crucial. And you'll see that'll start to thicken up right away. I wanna get this nice and smooth. I don't want my sauce to be lumpy. So the minute this comes together and thickens, I'm gonna add a little bit more. And with each add, I'm gonna add a little bit more than I did last time. And this is going to go a long way to giving me the kind of thickness that I want. I do not want a watery sauce. Okay. Just keep stirring constantly. This isn't tough. You can use the same technique for your macaroni and cheese. I'm sure there'll be one of those recipes coming soon. Okay, that's starting to smooth out a little bit, so I'm gonna add a bunch more and let it thicken every time. And let's go ahead and add the rest. I do not want this to boil, so I'm keeping it on a medium-high heat. And if it looks like it threatens to boil, I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. But right now, this is looking pretty good. I like to use kind of a figure eight motion to keep things creamy. So anything that you saw a little while ago that looked like it might be a little bit lumpy, you can see that it's all smoothing out now. Because I added a lot of liquid at once, It'll take a few minutes to come back to that thickness that I want, but what I did was lay the groundwork to make sure that that will happen. That's my roasted vegetables. I'm gonna take a quick second to pull those out and then we're gonna finish our sauce. Okay, the dogs are in. <laughs> the veggies are out. My sauce is thickening. It's still a little thinner than I want it in the long run, but this is just now a good phase for me to go ahead and add my Parmesan. So that's gonna go in and my wonderful tarragon is gonna go in. adjust this for you a little more. I want you to see what you need to see here. Sorry about that. We're kind of going on a wing and a prayer. I wasn't going to make a video today, so I didn't prepare the way I normally did. Anyway, we're just going to keep on stirring, stirring, stirring. My pasta water is trying to boil, and when it does, I'm just going to go ahead and dump that pasta in there. And this sauce should be ready just in time. And once this gets to the thickness that we want, we can put it aside for a few minutes and then just put a tiny bit of warm on it again. And that's what I'm gonna do because Mr. Cool Gray may not be home exactly when this recipe is ready, but that's cool. So you can see it's getting thicker now. I hope you can see that it's getting thicker now. It's getting into that beautiful kind of the same consistency that your cheese sauce would be if you were making a mac and cheese and that's what we want here. We want this to stick to our rotini and get into all those wonderful little coils. Uh, but we don't want it to get too thick. So you can tell by the resistance against your spoon. And when I stir, I can see the bottom a little bit. See it's sticking to the sides of my nonstick pan a little bit. This is the perfect consistency, just what I want. So I'm gonna take it off the heat and let it sit for a few minutes. My pasta's boiling away. 
My wonderful vegetables are done. Look at that beautiful char. Those are going to be delicious. I've huddled them up a little bit so they can have a group hug and get to know each other a little better. And I've got them on a warm burner to keep them a little bit warm. My sauce is ready. You can see how nice and thick. Nice and thick. And then I've taken the very tops of the green onions and I've chopped those up for a garnish. We're about ready to put this dish together. My pasta's drained. I'm going to return it to the pot that it was boiling in. And I'm going to add my wonderful tarragon sauce to that. I'm going to do it backwards so that you can see it. It's like Ginger Rogers in Fred Astaire. She did everything he did except backwards and in high heels. Only here, folks, can you get this kind of entertainment. Give this a good stir so that all the pasta gets coated nice and creamy. The same way you would if you were making your mac and cheese, right? Isn't this the way you do it? Okay, when we're ready to eat, I'm just going to put that in my beautiful bowls. I've got these great, beautiful, large red bowls. We're going to top with our roasted vegetables, garnish with a little green onion. Sorry about that clank. And we are ready to eat. So I promise you, Mr. Cool Gray, hey. we made this for him. Say hi, honey. Hi, honey. Hi, honey. <laughs> Welcome to dinner. Hey. Here's our finished meal. It's amazing. I've made it before. I already know that. Mm. Um, the Brussels sprouts are going to be tender and sweet because they're combined with that uh, butternut squash as well as the char that we got on some of those loose leaves. We've got a nice creamy sauce underneath and we are ready to taste. All right. Tell me what you think. All right. What's leaping out at you? Mm -hmm. It's so many different flavors. It's complex. It is complex. We've got that wonderful herbaceous tarragon flavor, which mm. is so unique. If you don't cook with tarragon typically and you give this dish to your guests, they are going to ask you what that flavor is. It's going to be the tarragon. So it has that herbaceousness to it. The roasted vegetables have a nice rustic, mm. uh, warm kind of feeling to them that goes perfectly with the creaminess of the sauce. Yes. And uh, the little bit of onion also helps to soften all the creaminess and give a little bit of sharpness amidst all the creamy sweet. So perfect. Excellent. Perfect. Excellent. Do you love it? Yes. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you make it, will you please let me know in the comments. Also, please like this video if you did. It really helps me know what to do more of mm. uh, while you're at it. Why don't you consider subscribing if you haven't already? And while you're on the main channel page, you can consider clicking the little bell, ding, ding, ding. It will notify you when there are new videos. We have more cooking videos, more art videos. The last time I made a dish with tarragon, it was the Green Goddess Buddha Bowl, so I will link to that. So check the description box for all the details and all of the uh, amounts and the full recipe. Thanks so much. We will see you next time. Mm -hmm. Say bye, honey. Bye. <laughs> no, bye, honey. No, bye, honey. <laughs> no, bye, honey. <laughs> bye. 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 bye.